For centuries, bats have been considered spooky, sinister, and associated with horror. These past accusations were due to their sharp teeth, but also that the vast majority of them only come out at night. Bats were the last lineage of animals to evolve flight, and to avoid competition with the birds that already filled the skies, they became nighttime specialists. And this unique evolutionary history dominated a lot of their evolution, with them evolving many unique features not seen in any other flying creatures, like echolocation. But bats are not just nocturnal insectivores, as they also eventually evolved into many niches that birds occupy, beating them at their own game, or evolving into completely new forms not seen in any other flying vertebrates, some of which are still around today like the blood-sucking vampire bats, while other strange bats are prehistoric and lost to history. The evolutionary history of bats is confusing because there are no fossils of them for the first 10 million years or so after the dinosaurs died out. Then around 52 to 55 million years ago in the Eocene, there is a sudden bat explosion, with many species being discovered all over the world in North America, Europe, North Africa, India, and even as far as Australia. And adding to the mystery, these early Eocene bats were very recognisable as bats and no transitional proto-bat that was halfway between a land creature and a flying creature has been discovered. One of the most primitive out of these ancient bats was called Onychonycterus, that is known from a fantastically well-preserved fossil, as it got buried under a lake bed in Wyoming when it died. Its wings were quite a bit smaller than modern bats, meaning it probably wasn't quite as good at flying, and it had retained a few primitive features from its land animal days, like a long almost rat-like tail and little claws at the end of every one of its fingers. But this creature was definitely capable of powered flight, and was definitely a bat. And this is the same story with all of the other Eocene bats, that although may have been slightly primitive in some ways, were definitely bats. Despite the lack of bat fossils before this bat explosion, there are a few things that can be inferred about bat evolution from the fossils that have been discovered. As bats have their wing membranes stretching from their front hands to their feet, it is likely that they were gliders before becoming capable of powered flight. The fact that Onochonycterus had so many claws at the end of its fingers meant that it was probably a better climber than most modern bats, which is what you would expect to see in an animal that had recently evolved from gliding ancestors. For a long time, many scientists thought that bats were closely related to primates. Bats share a lot of features in their skeleton, brain and eye anatomy to primates, but also primates have a very close gliding relative. The colugo is the primate's closest relative, and are tree-dwelling gliding animals that are even nocturnal, and many past researchers believe that the colugo may be a surviving lineage from the gliding animals that gave rise to bats. Unfortunately, more recently this has been pretty much disproven by multiple genetic tests, with none of them putting bats anywhere near primates, and actually bats seem to be more closely related to animals that look nothing like them. Bats actually belong to a giant group of mammals that are thought to have originated in North America and Eurasia, called the Laurasiatheria, and more specifically are likely most closely related to moles and hedgehogs and pangolins. But for now, the fossils that are needed to find out exactly how bats evolved are buried in deep time. It has long been thought that the quick success of bats was due to their nocturnal lifestyle, and more specifically their amazing skill that allows them to hunt so effectively at night, echolocation. Echolocation requires a lot of energy to function, and has very little advantage over eyesight unless it is dark, like in a cave or at night, so if the bats were capable of echolocation, there is a very good chance that they were nocturnal. There is no evidence that Onychonycterus was able to echolocate, but there are very old prehistoric bats that were able to showing that it did evolve early in their evolution. For instance, there is evidence that another Eocene bat called Paleocheiropteryx, found in Germany, was able to echolocate. Paleocheiropteryx branched off very early in the evolution of bats. So if this bat was able to echolocate, then all currently living species must have descended from echolocating and nocturnal ancestors. Fruit bats, scientifically known as pteropodids, are unable to echolocate 
is so if they also descended from an ancestor that was able to echolocate, then they must have lost this ability during their evolution. And this is very likely to be the case, as the embryos of fruit bats have the same adaptations in their ears as echolocating bats have that allow them to hear very high frequencies. So it is highly likely that fruit bats were able to echolocate once, like their smaller cousins, but as they became more active during the day and started to eat more fruit, they lost this ability. If early bats could echolocate their prey at night, they would have had less competition from insectivorous birds, and would have been at lower risk of being eaten by birds of prey that came out during the day as well. This would explain why there was a sudden explosion of bat species in the early Eocene. The transitional gliding or tree climbing mammals that eventually gave rise to bats were probably obscure and only found in a certain part of the world. But at the moment they became airborne, they were able to very quickly spread around the world as they filled the niche of nocturnal flying insectivore. And with there being more bats around, it is more likely that some of them would fossilize. Bats may owe their original success to their adaptation to a nocturnal insectivore lifestyle, but eventually they would evolve into many forms. In fact, as early as the Eocene, they had already diversified a lot. The fragmentary remains of a bat have been discovered from France and Tunisia that are dated to around 40 million years ago. Most of the fossils are of the jawbone and teeth, which were very robust and a lot more like other carnivorous land animals than the teeth of an insectivore. This shows that this bat was specialised for eating vertebrate prey, and was given the ridiculously over the top name of the necromantis, or the death eater. Some bats today are known to eat small vertebrates like fish or small birds, but the necromantis is the most predatory bat so far ever discovered. Bats are also unique among all mammals in their being species that can survive entirely on blood. Genetic tests show that vampire bats evolved from insectivorous ancestors, and in as little as 4 million years developed all of their specialisations that allow them to live this lifestyle, like anticoagulant saliva. Although they drink blood from a large variety of animals, including humans, their favourite foods are large mammals like seals or cows. Because of this, and their insectivorous past, it is thought that they may once have fed on the parasites like ticks and fleas that surrounded the large mammals, but then progressed to feeding on the mammals themselves. This is what happened with oxpeckers that usually feed on the insects that surround large African mammals, but will sometimes just feed on elephants or hippos directly if they have wounds. As little as 3000 years ago, a giant species of vampire bat once lived in South America. It was named Desmodus draculae, and was as much as 40% larger than the common vampire bat, with a wingspan of half a metre, which is around the same size as some of the smaller species of fruit bat, but it drunk blood. On a few occasions when bats diverged from their insectivorous ancestors and started to take on new forms, their evolution mirrored that of the flying creatures that had come before them. Bats are found on every continent apart from Antarctica, and are usually either giant fruit bats or the small insect eating variety. But in South America, the leaf nose bats had evolved into many different forms, with some of them eating fruit and others even preying on small birds. But one group of them converged with hummingbirds and butterflies in evolving to eat nectar. Amazingly, one of these creatures, called the Costa Rican Orange Nectar Bat, has grooves down its tongue that it can use to suck up the nectar from a flower into its mouth. So their tongue is used in a similar way to how a butterfly uses its proboscis, or how a nectar-eating bird uses its long beak. This shows that once animals have evolved flight, there are selective pressures that push them down the same evolutionary pathways. So once they took flight, their evolution mirrored the flying animals that came before. But how bats originally took to the air is still a mystery, and probably will be until more fossils are uncovered. However, this was the same place that scientists were in during the 60s and 70s with whale evolution, and then all of a sudden many fossils were discovered, perfectly showing the transition of how whales went from a land animal to an aquatic animal. So the discovery of a proto-gliding or climbing bat may just be around the corner. Thank you for watching. A big shout out to my patrons, especially the new big contributors Binky Barnes, Jekyll Dex, Wu Guoei, Jane Pyers, Legoless, and Persian Boy. If you enjoy content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.